Okay, let's see. World of Warships Command Center opening event. New ships. Okay, I don't know what this whole Command Center thing is because there hasn't actually been anything about it. And apparently this was the event that Jingles was invited to, but then they, then they were told that, oh, by the way, you can't actually share anything you find out here because it's all going to be NDA. So obviously Jingles was like, <laughs> why, why the hell would I go there? What the hell is worth going there for? Um, so it's a gaming room on HMS Belfast. Yeah, that's what I understood. But uh, yeah, this is the place, this is the thing where I, I, I saw when, when Jingle said that he was invited to something, but then he couldn't talk anything about it. I knew it was Wargaming. I instantly knew it was Wargaming because they're the only ones who would be dumb enough to go like, hey, pay to arrive to this place. I think it wasn't even covered, like they didn't even cover the, the, the fares or anything. It was like, hey, you're invited, but we're not going to pay anything and you're not allowed to share anything, but please show up and cover this. <laughs> so... Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting uh, for sure. That was interesting for sure. Now let's see, we can put up chat since chat always wants to be here. Let's put chat here. Boom. There we go. Chat chat has arrived. Okay. He might still be trying to cancel his train ticket. Possible. Let's see, the following researchable German battleships will be soon be added to the game for testing. Von der Tann, Moltke, Der Flinger, Mackensen. Mackensen, man, that sounds so Scottish. Mackensen. Mackensen. How do you pronounce that? Mackensen? Mackensen. Hmm. Mackensen. Mac Mackensen. Mackensen? Mackensen. Hmm. Alan Gu, thank you for gifting one to cure Sarge 12 months. Prince Heinrich Zieten Prince Ruprecht. Ruprecht. How do you pronounce that? Ruprecht. Is that fine? Ruprecht. Soft CH, Ruprecht. Ruprecht. Ruprecht? Das war richtig? Ruprecht. Less R rolling, but I roll my R's by habit. Rrr. Sehr gut. Okay, Ruprecht. Fair enough. Long U, Rup. Ruprecht? Ruprecht. Ruprecht. Your Deutsch is very good. Danke schön. But less R rolling. I can't roll R unless I just roll in my, I don't know, something about my, I don't know, Finnish, uh, Swedish, English, I don't know. Ich spreche viele frei Deutsch. Interesting. We Swedes do that R2. It might be from there. Finns do it as well. Perkele. Perkele. So Finny boys love rolling the R's. So it might be a thing. Okay, let's see. Uh, Prince Ruprecht Schliefen. Schliefen? Schliefen. That's how I'd pronounce it. Schliefen. Is that okay? Yep, correct. Okay. Wundertan. Wow, getting very, very... Not a whole lot of superstructure, is there? This, look at this plate. You see this plate, chat? You see this plate? That's gonna be an icebreaker. That's a gigant... You see this plating here? This slab of armor? That's gonna be a gigantic icebreaker. Flamo says hard R. More news at the <laughs> Interesting. World War One BBs tended to have no superstructure. Yep, it's true. It's uh, you can see it a lot, but especially especially the Russians get get away with a lot of bullshit at low tier because they got such absurd armor. Mm. One second, grabbing a book. Let's see if it's historical. As far as I understood, tier three, four, five, six are historical, and then everything else is bullshit. 
Can you pronounce the name like you would, names like you would read them in Finnish? Wondertan, Moltke, Derflinger, Mackensen, Prince Heinrich, Zieten, Prince Ruprecht, uh, Sliffen. That would probably be Finnish pronunciation. Fin Finns know that sh sounds, so there's no sh being used. So Schliffen would be Sliffen, or Skliffen, honestly. We don't use ch, c c s c h. Moltke. Interesting. Whoa, that looks. Look at that plate, though. Look at that plate. If that's that's modeled in game, this thing is gonna have a shit ton of icebreaker as well. You see that shit? God damn. That's gonna be a lot of plate. Very little superstructure. You can tell these are... Oh, they actually, they modeled the torpedo net. They don't usually do that. Usually they, they, they include these things. For those that aren't aware what these things are, this could be folded out, like you folded them out, and uh, they would become these long bars that stick out, and they would hold the torpedo net. So they would they would extend them, and they they dangle the torpedo net here. And the idea was any torpedoes that were sent the way of the ship would arm on the net, and basically away from the hull, or just be stopped by the net. So, um, interestingly, they've actually modeled the net on the side here. So you can see they would roll it out and then like dangle it. But uh, usually they don't, they don't model or show this part at all. I'm wondering why. Pamu is so good. <laughs> hmm. Your current recommended T98. Um, or oh, Tech Tree? Riga? Pretty goddamn solid. Der Flinger. Holy shit, look at that schnoz. Oh my god. Vladivostok has competition. There is schnoz competition for the Vladivostok. Jesus. That's a lot of snows. Good lord. It looks, honestly, it looks like these things have a lot of icebreaker. At least the, the model indicates it. I don't, we haven't seen the armor yet. That's going to be interesting. These are supposedly battle cruisers or fast battleships. But they're German, so we'll see about that one. Wondertan was most certainly historical. SMS Wondertan. And that's exactly how it looked. Interesting. Interesting. Mmm, Raptor, thank you for the two months. That's a lot of schnoz, though. Only eight guns. See, th this usually indicates that there's a lot of plating here, but you see how this is generally a weakness of, of older battleships in World of Warships. Um, you see how, how the armor basically is sloped like this. The armor goes like this to make room for the secondaries. You see it goes in, out, in, out. Like it's a it's a wavy plate to make make room for the secondaries. Now this is actually really shit in World of Warships because uh, it eats shells. Shells that would normally bounce uh, now have a lot of flat surface because if you shoot it from the side, like you shoot it from this direction, you got flat surface, flat surface, flat surface, flat surface, flat surface. So you end up with a lot of places where your shells can hit an arm. And generally this is a weakness. You A lot of ships hit a lot of damage on these spots. They're basically shell catchers, yeah. So, it's it's not very not very good for World of Warships. Looks like a p pretty thin ship though, like long and thin. Whoa, okay, that's a lot of nose as well. Mackensen, getting a bit more superstructure. Still eight guns. Potential still icebreaker. I can see the plate extending through here. Still potential icebreaker here. And fairly high belt, but once again, it's the same issue as earlier. You see how the once again we got a wavy hull, we got a wavy hull making room for the secondaries, and that's generally not something you want in World of Warships. If secondaries were actually worth the cost, maybe, but generally speaking, secondaries are pretty shit. That's a that's a Prince Eitel Friedrich. Oh, interesting. Mackensen pretty low in the water. It actually is a fairly small broadside for a battleship. I actually agree with that. A fairly small broad uh, freeboard. I mean, the length of the ship might be putting you off. Okay. 
Th thank you, Daniel, as always. Done. <laughs> Brian, Brian is an impressed man. Prince Heinrich. Dude, these things have so much snows. Hmm. These things have so much snows. Is that a torpedo set? I think that's torpedoes. That you see that gap there? I think that's torps. Very far back on the ship, but quite protected. Casemate guns. Man, I don't I, I don't like this because the secondaries don't seem like they're gonna do any damage, but they look like huge vulnerabilities to hitting damage. It's just a camera angle? I don't know, man. Even with the angle, this looks like quite a lot of nose. The lower ships had bow torps? Hmm. That looks like torps there, though. There's supposed to be long-range torps on the, on, on the high-tier ones, at least. Zeten! Holy shit! Hello? It reminds me of that, what is it called? Zumwalt. USS Zumwalt? That's a forehead and a half. It reminds me actually of that Dutch ship. There was a Dutch ship, Dutch cruiser. Well, the Ruiter? That's the one. The Ruiter. That's the one. It has a gigantic five head. Was it Celebes or which one was it? I can't remember. There was one Dutch ship that had a gigantic schnoz. Yeah, you can you can look at the look at the sleek lines, and then look at this thing. It's like it's got compressed. Like they took a long ship and they, and then it kind of sticks out because they compressed it so much. One gun in the front. You said German ships look good. They made them ugly as fuck. Yeah, true. So wait, why does that turret look so comically oversized for this small boat? Like everything about these proportions looks so weird. Look at the look at the turret size compared to the ship. It looks so out of place. The gun looks gigantic. But apparently there's they're not even that big caliber guns. It's just that the the scale looks weird. What's that? <laughs> Jesus. That didn't take long. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> that really didn't take long. Oh my god. That really didn't take long. <laughs> Jesus, that is one ugly ship, though. We see Torps here, though. What the hell is that? That's secondary secondaries. What a weird combination. <laughs> That's it. <a laughs> Thank you, I love Slamo. That was the be a beautiful rendition of Erika for sure. Prince Ruprecht. Okay, now it looks like someone stretched it out a bit again. Someone stretched it out. And it... But it still looks so weird. Like, the guns just look comical on the hull. It, it, the scale looks off. The scale just looks so fucking weird. Those are AA guns, not secondaries. The scale looks so weird for, for the hull. And this back turret is over here. Like, this one, I mean, we gotta highlight the fact, by the way, that this is a battleship that only has two guns forward. Two guns. Good luck pushing into anything. Uh, 
The tier 9 also has only 8 guns. This one has only 6 with an even worse setup than the Gneiser now. This thing though is interesting, it has two sets of Torps. You see that? Torps and Torps. 2x3, 2x3. Oh, sorry, just 2x3 and 2x3 on, on both sides, so 6 Torps. But man, this is... what a weird looking design. What a weird looking design. What oh, man, the one thing I really appreciated about German ships, even though their performance wasn't so good, was that they were really good looking ships. These wargaming abominations are most certainly not good looking. Holy shit. Still using casemates at tier 9 as well. Yikes. Tier 10, Schlieffen. 8 guns. 8 gun tier 10. Okay. Armor plate doesn't look like it's extending to the nose. It kind of looks like it cuts off here. Case, case meets on a tier 10. That's one, two, three, four torpedoes. Okay, so two X four on both sides. So eight torpedoes per side, potentially. Why do they have to be so ugly? Yeah, I know, like this. Like what happened to the beautiful, sleek look of the German ships? This is most certainly not it. Considering these are supposed to be 1910 designs. Okay, ships of tier 3 to 5 are based on the real ships of the German Imperial German Navy that participated in World War I. Battleship Mackensen was launched in 1917 but not completed. The tier 7 to 10 are based on designs developed in the light, late 1910s. I love that the Soviet cruisers are designs of the 1950s and then and then, like, the German line is designs of 1910s. <laughs> Interesting. The concept of the alternative branch of German battleships rests on short-range combat due to their low concealment, which won't matter at all in carrier games or just if there's DDs around. Decent secondaries, X for doubt. And small number of main battery guns with low range of fire. How is this a benefit? Wait, rests on short range combat due to their small number of main battery guns with low range of fire. How do you even make that into a positive thing? Why are they selling small number with shit range as a positive? The ships are also armed with the long range torpedoes. So you, they put long range torpedoes and the, in, if the torps are long range, oh no, are they gonna be like Elbing torps? You know, 50 knot torps that have, that can't hit shit. Oh no, it could be Elbing. What's the fucking benefit here? I swear, these latest designs by Wargaming is like a fucking toddler is being told, please design a close range ship. Like, that's what they did with the Yukon. Like, please design a close range ship. And the, 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 the developer goes, ah, uh, ah, uh, I could give it good armor, but instead I'm just gonna give it shit range. <laughs> like, <sighs> That doesn't make a good close range ship. It just makes someone who's forced to play close range. Not because they want to, but because they're forced to. Wargaming doesn't understand the concept of positive reinforcement. You want to make a ship that excels at cr close range. Actually, they do kind of understand it. Kremlin. Kremlin excels at close range. Because the guns are so nuts, the turret traverse is so good. So you want to go close and slap sh ships around with it. And the armor is so strong. But... 
Yeah, I don't know about this one. Jesus. British Battleship Incomparable, tier 10, a 1915 design for a gigantic fast battle cruiser armed with six 508mm guns in three turrets. Incomparable has low concealment and slim armor. Five hundred and eight. I mean, they, they're really just shitting on their old... Uh, there will never be a gun caliber larger than Yamato's. I knew as soon as they post the Shikishimo's released and they were like, yeah, but technically it's a Yamato Hal, so we're technically keeping our promise. I knew it was just the start of the fucking uh, collapse. And now we're going to have 508 millimeter guns on another nation. We never planned guns on ships over 460 yet. That was a fucking lie. But I mean, at this point, <laughs> what haven't they lied about at this point? This thing might be su surprisingly tanky. Because if these, these turrets are extremely well armed and this thing goes nose in, the turrets are so large, they're going to hide most of the superstructure behind them. So a nose in... A nose in incomparable might be quite tanky. And if this is heavily armored as well, because it's the control tower or whatever it's called. Interesting. Low concealment and slim armor. So it's battle cruiser. It's going to be thunder dispersion if it's battle cruiser dispersion. Five hundred eight millimeter guns with thunder dispersion. Yikes. It's it's British though. Five hundred and eight. Wait, let's see. Five hundred and eight divided by four is one hundred and twenty seven. One hundred and twenty seven. What happens if you run IFHE on this? It's one point twenty five. 159? You can get 159 HE pen on this thing with IFHE, which means you can sit at Des Moines with HE. <laughs> you can HE sit at El Cruiser, and well, Des Moines in particular. Jesus. But I mean, obviously, why the fuck would you be shooting HE when you can just shoot AP and overmatch everything, so... But it's still hilarious. Hmm. That's a lot of pen. That's a lot of pen. Someone speculated that this is gonna be you be using the Hood's armor scheme. Well, not, not really someone, uh... Well... Interesting. Various battle cruiser studies. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's a lot of link. The guns were to be of 38 cm caliber. Potentially 420 or 42 cm caliber. So no, no big overmatch here. Mostly going to be 380s, I guess. Hmm. Is this the tier 10? Is this the tier 10? This would be 8x420s. If this is the tier 10. That's the tier 10. That kind of looks like the tier 10. Hmm. But old guns with shit, shitty performance, it's possible. Yeah, no, I said, well, some guy, I said some guy considered it might be hood. Well, I should probably specify it's not just some guy, it's uh, 
when I posted about the comparable, it's the 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 the, the where is he? Shit, too many people commenting. Hello? Where the fuck is he? Hello? Mm. Shit. Fuck off. Oh, here we go. Uh, armor profile here. Um, Draki Finel suspects that it's going to be 11 inch armor and it's going to be using the Hood Admiral as a basis. That was Draki Finel's uh, speculation on it. So that's, that's pretty interesting. 11 inch slope in the late 1910s would have been adequate at medium to long ranges against 11 to 12 inch shells, possibly okay at long range. Yeah. Mm. At tier 10, it basically means you're okay dealing with cruisers and below in most cases, but prepared to angle massively or be deleted by capital ships. And at a thousand feet long, there's a lot of ships to target. That's the incomparable. That's Drakenifel's take. That's interesting speculation for sure, for someone who obviously knows a lot about, a lot about ships in general.